Can a buyer love letter just like this really result in a lawsuit? Well, that's what we're gonna cover in today's video and we're gonna start right now. Hey guys, Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International coming to you with another video. Uh, today we're talking about the buyer love letter and some of the new implications and laws uh, and rules, frankly, that might turn that into a lawsuit. Um, now, this is all fairly new, so this is more of an FYI style video, something that you absolutely need to talk to your agent about with the risks and the pros and the cons and all that good stuff. Um, but frankly, it's something you need to know going forward if you're going to be transacting on real estate here in the East Bay. If you get value out of this video, of course, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because I'm going to continue to put out weekly real estate content just like this and you're not going to want to miss it. So without any further ado, let's get into it. Anyone who's written an offer here in the East Bay or is considering it has probably come across this very standard practice of writing the seller a love letter. Uh, it's very common. It's something that happens on almost every offer that gets submitted here. It's an effort to kind of give a little bit of color to you as a, as a human being as opposed to just the X's and O's of your offer or if you're in a competitive situation, stand out and potentially give yourself a little bit of an edge, which in a seller's market, everyone's looking for that edge, right? And for a long time, I've been privately sort of talking to my buyers about the potential ramifications uh, of this love letter unintentionally in most cases traipsing into fair housing discrimination and potential lawsuits that could result out of that. Um, but now the conversation has been uh, shifted from the back rooms, the private conversations with agents and buyers to the forefront. And that is because of the addition of this document, which was the Fair Housing and Discrimination Advisory, which like agency and multiple buyers and sellers and wire fraud and all that stuff that I've talked about in other videos is attached to the front of every single offer by default by the California Association of Realtors. Now where this pulls the letters in specifically, I want to put this up on the screen and I'm going to read this to you. Paragraph 8, Section A, examples of conduct that may not be motivated by discriminatory intent but could have discriminatory effects are A, prior to the acceptance of an offer, asking for or offering buyer personal information or letters from the buyer, especially with photos. Those types of documents may inadvertently reveal or be perceived as revealing protected status information, thereby increasing the risk of one, uh, actual or unconscious bias, and two, uh, potential legal claims against sellers and others by prospective buyers whose offers were rejected. Interesting. So officially now, we've all been put on notice that this buyer love letter this practice that we've all been uh, part of in some way is really pushing the boundaries, frankly. Now, that's not to say that people aren't going to continue to do this, but you now need to understand the serious real ramifications of writing one and potentially reviewing one if you're a seller. Um, I'm, I read an article recently that just got put up. It was more of a Q&A style article, easy to read, by the California Association of Realtors which sort of says, okay, well, what should I do? What if I'm a seller and I get one of these letters? Should I read it? What if I'm a broker? What should I advise? Frankly, the answers are still really unclear. No, no one knows exactly what you should do or not do, but what you do need to know is that there is an added layer of scrutiny on these letters and it's just a matter of time until someone ends up in hot water in a lawsuit of some kind over one of these things. And so if you're actively buying or selling right now, you really need to take this into consideration. Take it very seriously because this document wouldn't appear if this wasn't a big concern for a lot of people. So this is not to totally scare you or frighten you by any means, but the point here is to warn you, to give you all the information so you can make the best possible decision for your buying and selling here in the East Bay. 
All right, well, I hope that was informative. A little shorter this time, hopefully giving you a little bit of good information. Um, if you got some value out of that one, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that all the links, all the PDFs, everything that I have is down in the description of the video so you can easily find it, read it, reference it for yourself. And of course, if you have any questions, drop a comment down below or shoot me an email. Uh, all of my information is down in the description as well. Happy to chat with you about this a little bit further if something was unclear or you want a little bit more discourse on it. So without any further ado, we're going to log it off for today. This is Hans Strazina with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International signing off for now. See you on the next one.